Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this new lecture series on operating system. In this series, we are going to discuss the fundamental as well as the advanced topic of operating systems. So let's begin with the very basic definition of operating system. As we all know, and we every day use the operating system. Operating system is a system software that acts as an interface between the user and hardware. So hardware we already know the things which we can see, which we can feel and touch. But the softwares are, we can see them, we can feel them, but we cannot touch them, right? So if we look at the like the overall the top view of an operating system it is playing an intermediate kind of role as an interface as depicted in this diagram. So hardware is here let's say there are many hardwares we will discuss after some time then operating system creates a kind of layer on that provide a kind of environment so that on this layer the other softwares or you can say application softwares can be installed and they can be successfully executed and then user can interact with the hardware through these particularly created environments right so because the term we take as operating system this is a system which takes the responsibility to operate the machine and machine is made of a number of hardware. So if you see the computer like this, whether you are having a computer, your personal computer or your laptop or your digital pad or mobile, anything, these all are like computers only. They are having some processing units, they are having memory. They have primary memory and secondary memory also. So let's discuss about the system components. The main component of any of the computer system is CPU, Central Processing Unit. This is the core part of any of the system which takes the responsibility to process the information and generate some new information. It also controls the flow. Now the next important part of your computer system is RAM. RAM is random access memory. So it is a kind of memory and this is also considered as primary memory. Primary and secondary there are two types of memory. We will discuss later on in detail. The RAM is having one particular property. We can extract or fetch the data from RAM at random like sequence selection is not necessary on the RAM. So it look like this. There are different types of RAMs in the market. Then the secondary storage. So you can say secondary memory. Now we call it hard disk drive or it is SSD. So there are Nowadays, SSDs are available. SSDs are generally faster than the hard disk drive. These are the traditional one. So, internal view you can have. The hard disk look like this. There are different number of disks. And there is a spindle which rotates these magnetic disks. There is a breathing rating head which can move like this in this direction there is an actuator axis so which actuate and control this particular reading writing and you can read it ssd is having altogether different mechanism as compared to this okay so we will discuss memory in detail later on when we come to the that particular chapter in operating system so this is one of the important hardware of every pc or laptop then this is the motherboard so every computer has a motherboard as the name suggests motherboard like 
It supports every component of a computer like a mother. It provides proper supports, provide the, uh, the power supply. So there are multiple slots available on this motherboard. You must be able to see this here. We put the CPU, the chip, which we have already seen in the previous slide. So we put the CPU here. There are different slots like CPU fan we mount here on the fan. So because CPU process it, and once CPU process at a very very fast speed, it start getting getting heat heating up. So we put the coolant and put the fan on the CPU so that CPU should be cool enough and working fine. There are power connector, so we connect the power here. Then there are ID connector, RAM slots are available, so we put the RAM here. There are multiple slots, it depends upon the motherboard. Then there are bridges, so south bridge and north bridges are there. South bridge primarily controls the functioning of input output devices. And north which provide the connection between the CPU and the other component those are connected on the motherboard. Right? There is a CMOS battery. So there is a battery. If you set some of the password at, at your BIOS level, so if your machine is not on, there is no power. This CMOS battery stores some of the important information. We later on discuss this. And there are certain PCI slots so that we can connect some of the peripheral devices. So let's say the peripheral devices, if you want to connect some external hard disk, or you want to connect some, let's say an IC card, or you want to connect some printer or a number of things, these slots will help us to connect those devices, right? So this is the motherboard, all the devices or peripherals we mount on this particular board power on the machine and this board provide proper support in terms of the power supply and every component start getting function but the thing is when we are having hardware you think like hardware like let's say we are have we are human and we are having body we are having hands legs and number of other body parts we are having but to function all these body parts we should have some controlling mechanism like brain so although we are having the computer, we need to install some of the software or you can say system software which can control or which can manage all these resources effectively so that a layman user can use the computer efficiently. And that roles is given to the operating system. So the prime role the operating system performs it performs the file management. File, we will discuss later on in detail in the class. File is something you assume like that or you may be familiar with the term also. It stores some data or you can say raw bits. Then file management, if you are saying file, file management task can be categorized like maybe the file creation, if you want to create a file, so creation of a file then deletion of a file, renaming of a file, and opening of a file, closing of a file, n number of different tasks can be performed on file. So operating system take care about all these things. Then operating system also do the device management. Let's say when we mount a device or we need to configure a new device in the system or we are removing any device from the system all these things or device level security is also there in terms of interrupts or other mechanism which we will discuss later on so device management is also one of the very important tasks of operating system then we have process management. Process like you must be familiar with the term process. Generally, we consider process is an instance of a program and execute. So when we write a program in C, Java, C++ in language, when we execute that program in 
run it after compilation it becomes a file okay so in process management there can be a number of tasks which will be performed like creation of a process so we can create a new process we can terminate a process we can copy a process image copy or you can say replace we may start establishing the communication between the processes so n number of different things can be done we will discuss process management in, in very detail now then memory management is very important task of an operating system memory so we are talking here the primary memory ram so what is memory management because ram is common and nowadays we are using multi program multitasking or multi user operating system so at the time multiple processes we need here and all the processes will be loaded in same ram so there are different mechanism when we allocate the memory for different from processes so this is a very important task which need to be performed by every operating system whether it is windows or linux or mac any other operating system then accounting is also one of the important feature or function it to be performed by operating system accounting means like there are n number of resources os also acts as a resource manager so if a resource is available or how many instances of a resource is available a resource is not available how many resources are allocated to a process which process is completed and the resources are released so all this information will be maintained inside the operating system so all these are very important functions of an operating system in next session we will be talking about the different types of operating thank you for connecting see you in the next class